Peter Muir was one of the first Jamaicans to have attended the prestigious Harvard University, having won a scholarship in 1958. He went on to hold senior positions at three major multinational corporations in Jamaica, Colgate Palmolive, Booker BDH, and Esso Standard Oil. At age 50, he retired from all of that to look after his ailing wife for another 20 years. His is an inspiring story. Welcome to Profile, I'm Ian Boyle. Peter, what a journey it has been from the inner city community of Southside, where you faced so many difficulties, where you grew up dirt poor, to Cambridge, Massachusetts, where you studied at Harvard. Let's reflect on early years, your early beginnings in Southside. Well, um, those were different days from what I am today. Mm -hmm. I was born into this very poor family at um, 11 High Alban Street. High Alban Street. In Southside. Yes. Near the waterfront. Mm -hmm. And. Um, How many of you were in the family? Eight children. Eight. I was the fifth of eight children uh -huh. to my um, father and mother who were married. Mm -hmm. And um, my grandmother, whose house we lived in, and who was the ruler of the <laughs> realm. Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Um, Tell me about school days. Well, um, what school you attended? Before I even get to school days, I could mention you know that yes. um, we were living on top of my grandmother's premises uh -huh. in less space than she alone occupied downstairs. Is that so? All yes. of you? Just two rooms. Two rooms. Just there's a living room and a bedroom, mm. and the, the back of the bedroom was partitioned off for a small. Um, bedroom for my father yes. with a single bed uh -huh. right and then there was only one double bed for all eight children and my mother <laughs> and your mother yes <laughs> because <laughs> because she would be welcome into the single bed with my father for sex but she usually returned into the bedroom I see, to see with the, with the children, <laughs> with the children. <laughs> what an arrangement we couldn't hold all hold on one bed yes and then i um, Things were so miserable that, um, that, that fleas frequently visited us. Fleas? Yes. And the kaya mattress. Mattress, yes. Kaya. Which had lots of um, holes. Yes. And the kaya used to prick. prick you, know, you could never escape the pricking of the kaya. What? Yes. So there's no comfortable sleeping at no all? No comfortable sleeping anywhere. I used to sleep on the dining table, the wooden dining table. Yes. <laughs> to get some comfort. Yes. <laughs> yes. I, I was, the fleas never... Trouble be Trouble a, dear. A, a dining table, yes. Mm. <laughs> so you were you were <laughs> scarce for food sometimes? There wasn't enough food, there was no clothes. We were um used used clothes from Salvation, Salvation Army. Salvation Army clothes yes. used to wear. Yes. Mm -hmm. yes. And there was nothing of food, we were hungry a lot. Yes. Yes. So there's a preliminary to go into. So as a grown boy growing up, mm -hmm. you were living like the regular poor poor black boys around. Of course. I even went to elementary school barefoot. Yes. Yeah, because there were no shoes to wear. Uh -huh. Not like, like there was a Sunday school shoes. You had a Sunday school shoes? No, no. I not didn't have any shoes at all. That's not at all. Not, not even Sunday best. Not even. That's <laughs> Things were that, were, 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 were that hard. Were that bad, yes. So let's, let's go to the elementary school. Elementary now. school. Which elementary school you attended? Holy Family. Oh, Holy Family. Yes. Mm -hmm. Catholic. And uh, how did that school. work out? Oh. Well, before I went to elementary school, I went to infant school. Infant, uh-huh. And it was about three. And it was a, a yard around the corner on Tower Street. And it was just a, a zinc shed with a few be benches underneath it in the open air, you know, mm -hmm. in the yard. So um, it, there was no trained teacher or anything, but somebody who had gone to elementary school yes. and, and knew how to count and knew, <laughs> you know, how to read Passed a little. That right. knowledge. So um, I was so focused on education. You were? From I was a little tiny boy, yes. You focused on education. My mother was just totally passionate ab about education. Oh. And her children must get a good education and must use education 
to come out of the si bad situation mm -hmm. we were in. Mm -hmm. So she would pay, with a, it was um, six pence a week or what have you, yes. for you to go to basic school. Yes. To get a good start on education. Even when Either she didn't have enough food. Not food or clothes. Oh. Education was more important. What a change yes. in values and from I, those years. I picked that up and I decided that I need to help my mother and education was what What's was going to make me be able to get somewhere to help her. So you always strove to do well. I was just totally focused on education, education. from when I was a little boy. Boy. Yes. Mm -hmm. So much so that when I went there first, I was just being taught as a beginner, you know, mm -hmm. um, to count one and two and three and say A, B, C and that type of thing. Yes. So when she finished teaching the youngest, she moved on to the older ones who had gone further. And I was then supposed to be playing. No, no. I stayed behind and I was trying to learn the, the, the higher level For as higher well. Level. Yes, I was totally That's concentrated. Yes. So when I went to elementary school, I came first in... You came in, first to elementary school? In a, in a class, first in B class, first in C class. Yes. Oh. Every year I come first. Every year. You... But what happened when I went back the year after I came first in C class? Mm -hmm. They put me back in C class. Uh -huh. Yes. Why? There was enough space or what? No, no. You had two divisions of elementary school, junior and, and senior division. Uh -huh. And you had to be a certain age to move from oh, junior I to senior. I see. I came first, and I was the youngest in the class, and I couldn't move because couldn't I, move. I wasn't old enough to go yes, to the senior well, division. Well, so they put me back into C class. Oh, so you had to repeat. <laughs> yes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes. I wasn't amused. You weren't amused. But my eldest sister, she was absolutely outraged. Yes. So she went with me to the head, headmistress. The totally object by being held up in C class yeah. after I came first. Yes. And she said, I can't help you. She explained the situation. Mm -hmm. Means of education won't allow you to move up. So my sister asked if I could then skip from C class to third form. Oh. Or to third class. Uh -huh. Everything was class. Um, the, the following year, um, well, sister said, there's no rule that you can't skip. Mm -hmm. But you. It, Peter wouldn't be able to manage because you he had done class. second class work. Yes. So he can't possibly manage third class work. Of course. So when I went back to school the next year, they put me into second class, yes. which is where I'm supposed to go. Yeah. Um, and my sister went back to Sister Philemon again. She says, I want you to put him into third class. And Sister Philemon said, he you can't, can't manage you can't manage third, third class. She said, right. well, she was actually giving me some um, lessons mm -hmm. in arithmetic that was second class, yes, you know, standard. So she was sort of preparing me for a skip and she wanted his sister to try me All in third right. So she did. So she eventually decided to try me. And I came first in third You came first in third, third class. Third class. First in, second, in fourth class. First in fifth class. <laughs> you just kept doing well. I just kept doing anything worse, better, worse than first, always. And you never had money to buy books or, or you dealt with the studying and that kind of thing now? Well, you stayed back, you... I went to school sometime without any lunch money. If I walked back to school, there was no lunch to eat, uh, drink okay. water and go back to school. Drink water and go. Yes, I went to school barefoot because mm. there was no, I didn't have a pair of shoes. But you were focused on education. I was just focused on education. You wanted to do well. I, I was just absolutely focused. Mm -hmm. Focused to the extent that, I mean, even as a teenager, 14, 15, 16 growing up, I never dated a girl. Never dated I was just girl. totally so focused on education. Uh, and you, had, you, you didn't have sex until you're 21. You're saying this. In I this was book. a virgin at 21. Yes. Very unusual <laughs> to me. Oh, man. But, I was just but your energies totally were sublimated. On education. On education. Yes, yes. You eventually went to St. George's. I went to St. George's. That's 14, an interesting story. At 14. At 14, you went yes. to St. George's. Sister Philomena, the headmistress from my elementary school, took me. She's a Catholic white. American nun, yes, head, headmistress, took me to the Catholic white American priest, mm -hmm. Father McMullen, who was the headmaster yes. at St. George's, and asked him as a personal favor to allow me to enter St. George's at 14. 14? Yes. He said, he had never done anything like that. Nothing like that. Except the person had been going to high school before, but I had never gone to high school. You had never gone to any high school. And therefore, I would have to be put down with 11, 12 age children. <laughs> yes. In, in first... First form? Yes. She said, no, no, put him into the, into the form that his own age is. 14. He's supposed to he, he can that, manage it. That's third form. Yes. And he, ca he, ca he can't manage second class. Yes. He'd have to go into first form. Yes. She said, Father, this is an exceptional boy. And I know that he can manage third form. 
He said, it's totally impossible. There's no way he would put me in third form. But he tried me in second form. Yes, I see what But he's certain that he'll have to put me back put down back. into first form because I can't hey, manage. Hold the story there. <laughs> this man is a natural a story teller. And in this book, Masterclass Magic, The Journey to Health, Happiness, Love, and Success, he gives a lot of fascinating stories about his life, about early Jamaica. No, 77, sharp mind, many enthralling stories. When we come back from our first break on Profile. Masterclass Magic is Peter Muir's book about his extraordinary life. Now, that's an overused word, but when you hear the Peter Muir story, you know that it is not misplaced or exaggerated at all in his case. So you're telling us about this case now at, at, at St. George's. Yes. You entered at 14, yes. but Father McMillan, um, then principal, naturally felt... You can't manage the classwork at that age. So. so sister insisted to the extent that father said, I give up. I try him in third form. Try him in, in third. Even though I know he's going to end up back in first. Yes, that's yes. yes, true. Well, I'm there, you know, when they're discussing me. <laughs> and I'm so proud of the confidence that sister has sister in me. Has you, yes. And I'm saying that I'm going to try my best yes, to prove him wrong. Someone. Yes. I'm not going to end up back in first form. Yes. Right. I came third the first term. You came third? Yes. The first Six term? And came third. And at the end of the year, I was number one. Came first. You were number one? Yeah. Skipping two forms Skipping and I came two forms. first. At St. George's? Yes. Then I came first in, in fourth form. First in, in fifth form. First in the overseas exam for senior Cambridge examinations. Yes. Yes. And you came first in the island? First in the island, in senior Cambridge. First in yes. the island in senior Cambridge? Yes. And you saw a boy, you, had, you came from Holy Family. You had missed first and second forms. Mm -hmm. A poor boy. But I'm working my way. Oh, you working from your 11 too? From I was 11. For 11 you're working? Yes, and saved up the money, my own money, f to pay f to go into St. George's at, um, th in, in third form. And I was still working. You see, what, what kind of work you were doing? I was teaching. You were teaching? Teaching younger children arithmetic in the elementary school. After classes, I was... After class, you went to, to yes. work at 11? And I was wrapping, wrapping goods in, in stores around town. You did that? Yes. Wrapping goods? Yes. You saving your money? From 11, I was working, working, working. To, to go, go to high school. To go to... to it. three years to save enough money. Yes. Yes. Were you prefect at, at, at St. George's? Yes. When I came first in, 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 in third form, right? The following year, they made me um, house captain. House captain. I was in charge of... One of the houses, four houses, yes. in charge of discipline, in charge of sports, oh. everything, whatever activities, you know, debating, whatever. I was in charge was of... Was it at St. George's that you were valedictorian? Yes. You were valedictorian at, at St. George's? Yes. Can you imagine? I'm this poor boy. Poor boy? You are going to school. I don't have food to eat. Book. Even then, I can't buy the books. You can't buy books. I have to write all the homework out of somebody else's book. That's and I'm coming first. And you're coming first. Yes. And you're hungry sometimes. And I'm hungry. And you are going to your people like who? John Hissa? John Hissa was in the same. John Hissa was in your class? Yes, was in class. The same class as me. The rich boys were, rich were boys. there. Their father, big cars. Big, uh, rip, put, drop big shot and cars. Sort of and, and, and John was a brilliant boy. And John, other, John Hissa? Was, yes. Yeah. And he was very bright. He was bright? Distinction or whatever. Yes. Oh, it, it and did other work. very bright, prominent sons of very important people. people. And I'm this little poor boy from Doto. Don't hide about Alban Street. Yeah, still wearing Salvation Army clothes. Can't buy, can't, don't have food to eat. Can't buy my books. Working. Yes. And it made me the valedictorian. Valedictorian. To address all these prominent people at, at graduation. <laughs> yes. Representing the class. Yes. <laughs> How that made you feel, uh, 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 Peter? <laughs> Did that just bolster your confidence? But the thing is, is that because from the start, yeah, you I was always it. coming first. Yes. I was always very proud and very confident. Ah, oh, you're confident. I was confident all through my you life. Throughout your life. With all the problems 
and I was very sick in many instances. You were sick too? I was sickly, yes. I was short-sighted. I had allergies. I had flu all the time. Mm -hmm. um, and when I just started going to, to um, St. George's, I was playing baseball after school one evening, and, and a boy let go the bat and hit me straight in my mouth. I was catcher. Mm -hmm. And killed five of my front teeth. I five of, died five from when I was fourteen. Mm -hmm. Yes. So you battled illnesses. I, you battled misfortune. Yes. But you still achieve despite that. So you don't accept the excuses of people who say they can't achieve because of all these circumstances. There need be no excuse. No excuse. There is no excuse. Poverty, lack of connection, these right. things, no excuse. But. There is a certain set of circumstances and certain ways of thinking. Yes. Certain ways of being determined and That's having right. goals and, That's right. and what have you. Those are the important things. And you have to have confidence. And if you have that and perseverance, nothing can stop you. Nothing can stop you. And I know how I can, I can advise people how to do it for themselves. Yes. At any age, under any circumstances. Yes. And in your, in your book, The Masterclass, mm -hmm. uh, Magic, you give some tips. Yes. As to how people can be successful. Yes. And you have your own life to demonstrate. Of course. You ended up at Harvard. No, how did that happen? <laughs> you took scholarship exams and ended up in the top three percent, percent of the world. Give, give, me, give us that story. Yes, okay. So, well... When I graduated from St. George's, from St. George's yeah. I quit school forever. You quit school then? And got a job. Yes. And I'm happy and I'm... You feel so that's I it. Out my mother. You help out your mother now. And we're not so hungry. And you so achieve your goal, yes. Achieve my goal. I'm finished. Finished now. Reach the pinnacle of my Apex. all of my ambitions. Yes. But when I didn't turn up um, for school, father mother sent back for me. So Peter, why aren't you, you... You didn't finish school? Yeah, yeah, yeah you finished at fifth form. Yes. Oh, but, but you're supposed to go back. Yes, six, six form. Six form. Yes. Why am I not back in school for six form? So they tell me, no, Peter, school is not coming back. He said, tell Peter to come and see me at the end of the week. Oh. So I went to see him. And he said, Peter, you, you have to come back. And this is what I said. But I said, there's no way I'm coming back. Because, I mean, I've been working and struggling and yes. I've been hungry. Well, you and can't buy the books. Now. And the, the six form books are three times a, the expense. Oh. I won't be able to buy any now. Oh, so Instead of only buying a few. Was a factor? Oh. Yes. No, I, I couldn't go to oh, money school. was a factor yes. with the sixth form. I earned all the money. I couldn't get any help from my family. I see. Yes. yes. But he said that, okay, we'll give you a, a scholarship. You want to pay, you have to pay any fees. Oh. We'll give you a job. Oh. And we'll pay your money. What? We'll give you meals, you were such but a you have to come back. Valuable student. So I quit school, I went back. You went back to <laughs> St. George's. St. George's. So now, when we reached the second year of sixth form, everybody was advised that if they were interested in going to um, university, mm -hmm. they should take the, the um, entrance That time you don't know about university. Yeah, I don't have any intention <laughs> of going to university. I don't think... I. I cannot possibly go to go university. university. You can't afford that. I can't afford Let's high school. Break the story <laughs> and see how Peter Muir ended up at one of the finest universities in the world, Harvard University, 1958. We take our final break on profile. Former company executive Peter Muir telling a part, a little part of his story on profile. So we're moving up now after St. George's. Yes. People, guys were told, um, vie for universities. Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay, so um, we were also advised, in addition to taking the, um, the exams, you should choose some universities that you would be interested in going to. Mm -hmm and um, advise the, the exam people, but they would then send your results to those universities. So I know of no universities. <laughs> I had no intention of going. going to any because I couldn't go. You can't afford it. But I said, they told me to take it, so let me take it anyway. Yes. Because I wouldn't mind going, mm -hmm. even though I know I can never go. Yes. Right. So I took the exam. Took the exam. And um, there was a book in the school library with hundreds of universities, perhaps. 
Um, so I opened a page of the book and looked to see if that university gave over scholarships to overseas students. Yes. And I found f six, and I submitted those names to the examiners for the, mm -hmm. the exams. When the results came out, I ranked in the 97th percentile, which means the three, top 3% three in the entire world. In the world? In the world. The top 3%? Yes. After you did your SAT exam, the SAT school? The results of it, yeah. And this is an American exam. American. And some aspects of the exam, I didn't know. You weren't even familiar with? I wasn't even familiar with. And I still ranked in the top 3% in the, the world. The top 3% in the world? In the world, yes. Poor boy from High Albany Street. Yes. And, you, and Harvard was one of the six schools you had sent for, you had sent in for? I, I didn't know. I, yeah, I, I didn't, didn't know Harvard. what Harvard was? No, not a clue. <laughs> you didn't know this was the, the, the pinnacle of intellectual life? No idea, whatever. I didn't know of any university. You didn't know of any university any at all? at all. But Harvard offered you a full scholarship? Full scholarship. Tuition, everything? Yeah. It was the third American university to offer me a scholarship, yes. Mm. So tell me about the Harvard experience. When you went there, mm -hmm. the brightest from all over the world. Well, <laughs> I'm this poor boy. Yeah. I can hardly find the ear for to go to Boston. <laughs> right? yes, yes. I, I reached there, yeah. and um, I can't afford a taxi or so. so. Take the subway. subway I don't know anything about subway, <laughs> but I take the subway <laughs> to Harvard Square in Cambridge. Yes. Yes. And I come out of the, you know, the underneath um, railroad yes. system and, you know, the, it was, I was in a new world. Yes, yes. You know, all the, 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 the whole Harvard Yard of with this magnificent building yes. is there in front of me. Yes. And, you know, all the lights and the, <laughs> and the fancy stores and everything, you know, I'd never seen anything <laughs> like that in my life. Yes. So what am I in for, you know? <laughs> anyway. But you had confidence. Yeah. I was totally confident. You didn't believe anybody was better than you? Absolutely not. There were children of sheiks there. From I was small. Children of presidents. Yes. I grew up in prejudice and injustice mm -hmm. and in inequality mm -hmm. and everything that was bad. And I rejected all of that from I was small. We are small. And I decided that I was being taught in my family that we were better than, because we were fair we skinned. people. Yeah, brown we people. We were black people all around us. Yes. And we were told not to associate with them. Your family told you? Because we are better than them. Yes. They told you? You mustn't talk to them. I, we totally ignored them. I was up and down on, on the street with, with, the, with the black people there. Yes. Yes. And I had a great time with them. You've always been against classism. Right. It and I decided so from I was small that I'm not better than anybody else. Mm. And I was also confident that nobody is better than me. Nobody is better than me. I was small. Yes. And that stood you in good stead when you were in Harvard. And I landed in Harvard, and you have all these brightest stu students stu in the world. Yes. The, the, the richest, richest of the best. Of course. Yes. Of course. King's sons, president's sons, yes. sheikh's sons, sons yes. you know, all the top government officials, um, of your know, senators and also professors. That's right. All, all the brightest and the best are there in Harvard. And I didn't feel inferior to any of them. Yes. I was there equal as far as I was concerned. Absolutely. Never felt intimidated or anything. Yes. I was comfortable with any and all of them. Yes. yes. As you have been throughout your life. Yes. We haven't talked yet how you looked after your disabled wife for 20 years, left your job <laughs> at 50, cared <laughs> for a her. He was the one who, who brought Shish Kebab, popular restaurant, brought that in New Kingston. Next week, we're going to talk more about Peter Muir's life. There's so much more that he has to tell us. Tell your friend, friends about this interview and make sure you're tuned in next week. Until next week, Ian Boyd wishing you a very pleasant and a very productive week. Mm -hmm.